fish praying ceremony. I like how that one to the left has the red and green and black. It looks Gucci. <laughs> so Gucci. The fish it's praying so ceremony is a common cultural activity of coastal fishing villages in Da Nang, annually held in the spring. The ceremony often lasts two days of serious and solemn rites, warm and noisy entertainment activities. Bao trao, ba trao dancing and singing is a unique general ritual performance ceremony, including dancing, singing, and performing a short play, which describes fishing activities, praises the merit of Ka Ong, and expresses their aspiration of a peaceful life. Pretty. It's a cool looking boat. I wonder if we see any of those. Fisherman's life and their coastal culture. <laughs> We're at the Da Nang Museum, and I bought my ticket. Nice little area. I mean, I, I don't mean to knock Hanoi, but I'm I'm think I'm more of a fan of Da Nang. I don't mean to knock Hanoi, but I'm I'm think I'm more of a fan of Da Nang already. Everything's so nice and clean. I gotta tell you, the after we toured a couple of sites in Hanoi, I was ready to toss out the the capitalist invaders. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> At the end of that museum, I was like, <laughs> yeah, get them. And they did. Yeah, that they did. They, yeah. Their entire history is is being badasses and fighting people off. Yep. <laughs> right. It seems like every every major empire in the region, and you know, obviously plenty that weren't a couple that weren't in the region, think that uh, it's you know it's going to be a great idea to invade Vietnam, and they all get sent home packing. For over ten centuries, this village has been well known for its fish sauce in order to produce finished fish fish sauce with specific and attractive taste. The people here apply their knowledge as well as life and job experience to the process of making fish sauce. Furthermore, they are very keen on selecting fish salt and filtering salt. They're also very careful about how to arrange fish and have them salted in glazed terracotta jars. See, you got that Frenchy stuff in modern mm -hmm. times. Notable collections include restored walls of the fortress built by Emperor Min Mang, um, or Mean Mong, uh, mm -hmm. but photographs depicting life in Da Nang from 14th century, artifacts related to national reunification in 1975, exhibits showcasing, uh, showcasing various minority ethnic groups in the region. Now, that's kind of like um, what we saw before, where it shows the different ethnic groups um, from that other museum. Right. The so I like the continuity. Yeah, that was yeah. really cool, too. So well, I'm, I'm digging Vietnam's museums in general. Yeah, they're good museums. <laughs> Um, I will. I I will say I I notice a um, strong respect for uh, indigenous ethnic groups because obviously not everyone here is yes. open to the resistance war against the French Spanish coalition forces from 1858 to 1860. On September 1st, 1858, the French Spanish coalition troops, including 2,300 soldiers with 16 warships under the command of Admiral Rigault de Genouilly. Began, began bombarding the Nguyen Court's defense system at Da Nang Seaport, starting the aggressive war of the French colonists in Vietnam. I didn't know the Spanish were involved. It's interesting. Nobody expects the Spanish to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> it's true that. <laughs> that was what Says. Yeah. Um, this museum was established as, you know, Da Nang Museum, but established in 1989, initially named Quang Nam, uh, Da Nang uh, Provincial Museum, or pro okay. probably Provencial, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, probably some Frenchy crap. Um, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Uh, but rebuilt and relocated to its current location in 2005 plays a significant hmm. role in educating locals and tourists about Da Nang's history and culture. Their empire was still going strong. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. 
19th century cannon. Oh, it's a replica. I came over because of these weapons. Weapons used by the Nang people and soldiers in the early days of the resistance war against the French army. Well, we don't get to hear their side of anything right. ever. And nor nor do anybody care here. Um, they don't give a damn over here because they're selfish assholes. <laughs> or, <laughs> because we'd have to take it upon ourselves like we did, you know. Right. Luckily, there's still history teachers out there. They'll still, like, actually teach something, you know. Like, Jacob and Santana had some, well, they had the same history teacher at the yeah. school. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, and he was good yeah. um, and truthful. He said, I'll be truthful to the point of which your parents won't complain to me, though. No. So I would suggest you look up more about it. Well, yeah, you know, so he encouraged him to look up more about it. Right. Yeah. It's it, it's not always like a top down, um, you know, yeah. It's it, it's not always like a top down, um, you know, scheme from from the masters that keep this stuff hidden. But rebuilt and relocated to its current location in 2005 plays a significant huh. role in educating locals and tourists about Da Nang's history and culture. It houses over 2,500 artifacts, documents, and photographs. Exhibits cover various periods of Da Nang's history, including prehistory, Cham era, French colonial period. Notable collections include restored walls of the fortress built by Emperor Min Mang, um, or Min Mang, uh, mm -hmm. but photographs depicting life in Da Nang from 14th century, artifacts related to national reunification in 1975, exhibits showcasing, uh, showcasing various minority ethnic groups in the region. Hey, ball. The traditional seaboat of coastal inhabitants in central Vietnam and the south of central Vietnam was very popular from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Ghe bao ghe, is the type of double-bottomed boat made from solid hardwood such as heckwood, chestnut, ironwood. The hull is rounded, roundish with big size thanks to the large volume below the waterline. Loading capacity of the ghe bao is big, which is up to 100 tons. Loading capacity of the ghe bao is big, which is up to 100 tons. Also, it is able to go out to sea. It it's a must-visit for history buffs and those seeking to understand the cultural tapestry. I love that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, traditional craft tools and objects showcasing local artisan heritage, which we did see some of that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, uh, traditional craft tools and objects showcasing local artisan heritage, which we did see some of that, didn't we? We did. Oh, the second floor is dedicated to war crimes, offers a poignant reflection on the region's past struggles. We did. Oh, the second floor is dedicated to war crimes, offers a poignant reflection on the region's past struggles. So we've got our... Our, uh, our yes, what? Literally, natural arts, crafts, history, all that down there, but then the, the second floor is going to be some realness that's like... Mm perspective too seems like every every major empire in the region and you know obviously pl plenty that weren't <laughs> a couple that weren't in the region think that uh it's time you know it's gonna be a great idea to invade vietnam and they all get sent home packing sent packing home i want to introduce you to what i like to call the museum dash <laughs> we the we museum really need dash? yeah we really need to move on to the next site but there's a whole other floor of museum to go through oh are we gonna speed run we're gonna what speed run the museum because it didn't say it in there oh really so okay this one? so let's find out yeah. <laughs> we're gonna find out very quickly <laughs> um these are jars they look like they're making booze but i don't mm -hmm. see a good we're gonna wait till we get a explainy kind of a thing happening Uh, it looks like there's some tea. That's a nice table. Mm -hmm. What are we making here? What is this about? All right, let's get the no. big area here. Could be medicine. These guys are just having some tea. Okay, and here we have a, a pharmacy, medicine shop. He's like, pay up, okay? All right. So that's obviously what that is. Is that the whole thing here? The statue of General Nguyen Chi Phong and the program each person gives the bronze drop to build statues of Vietnamese celebrities was given to Denying City by and the program each person gives the bronze drop to build statues of Vietnamese celebrities was given to Denying City by the Vietnam Association of Historical Science, Song Ba Urban and Industrial Zone Development, JSC in twenty ten.
I think people need to really appreciate how much effort it takes to make that. Um, because I don't know if you ever made pottery in school, but I did, mm -hmm. and it was a lot. And you think about ancient peoples didn't have all the you know equipment <laughs> right. that we have to do it. Right. <laughs> I tell you what, if if I had been in, in the ancient world, either I or they would have been doomed. They'd be like, "Your job is making pottery," <laughs> and I would just say. <laughs> I was like, I would just be like, you know, you're going to have to hold it in your hand because I don't know what to do. <laughs> there are bombs that uh, go off, uh, go off uh, when you get close to them, I think. Oh, here it says, air delivered seismic intrusion detector or the McNamara line. A modern electronic reconnaissance device was used by the Army, U.S. Army troops, war equipment used in the Quang Nam Da Nang battle battlefield. <laughs> it resembled a lawn tropical tree with a transceiver inside to prevent being found. The device could sense vehicles or soldiers' earth motion and transmitted the data to the infiltration surveillance center of the U.S. Their empire was still going strong. Oh, interesting. Nineteenth century cannon. Oh, it's a replica. I came over because of these weapons. Weapons used by the Nang people and soldiers in the early days of the resistance war against the French army. Noban Weapons Workshop was the first militias weapons workshop of Denang, founded on April fifteenth, nineteen forty six, according to the City Party Committee's instruction in order to produce and repair weapons to ensure timely delivery of the fighting soldiers, guerrillas, and militiamen in the city. I guess these are the kinds of weapons they were making. It, I, it didn't have an official transfer, but I think we've moved into the uh, uh, revolution, the 20th century, you know, kicking the French out part. We started with uh, the French um, uh, taking over, and now I think we're getting rid of them. Uh, Mono Base, <laughs> a revolutionary base located in the northern side of Sontra Peninsula, used to be part of the Da Nang City Party Committee office, started the operations from 1954 after the Geneva Agreements were signed. Until 1958. Oh, so we're going to go to Sontra, but we need to look for any um, historic sites there relevant to the war. Because we'll have a lot of time on the peninsula. So. Yes. SITA fabric was manufactured at the resistance war against the French. Do you know what that is? SITA fabric in battle in the fifth region. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but I know that that shirt right there looks very much like Jacob's favorite Levi's denim shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's it could be nice. quite fashionable That's, today. It's nice. Well, you know what? I haven't ever seen uh, Vietnam not have some fashionable stuff going on. True that. I've noticed they're like pretty cool. Hey. We know what that is. Yes. That, they're calling a rifle. DK-57 rifle used by the Company 3, Battalion 74 of local armed forces of Quang Nam, Da Nang. The gun was set to on fire. Two enemy tanks killed 18 puppet soldiers at Keelong Village. It was used in the liberation of Tien Folk District, participated in 37 combats, ground on lots of enemies, strength. Destroyed many enemies, mechanical uh, means, and military posts in 1973. In 70, okay, so this is the American War. 1975, it was used in the Quang Nam Da Nang Liberation Campaign. So we've moved into the American War. After the Geneva, Geneva Accords in 1954, the government of the Republic of Vietnam, with the promulgation of Law 1059, brought guillotine around provinces of southern Vietnam to execute patriots. 1954. Dang. Government of the Republic of Vietnam. That's southern Vietnam, right? Uh, yeah, because what was the northern called? Like, uh, is it just northern? The Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Oh, we got to go on to the next site. Oh? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're going to see everything on the way. They've arranged everything nicely in there. 
Yeah, yeah. I wish we'd started up here. <laughs> when you said the, the, <laughs> the good stuff was upstairs, I was like, oh, let's finish up. I mean, I don't want to disrespect the rice and the stuff downstairs, but. Because I get it. That's their their natural and cultural history. But, uh -huh. you know, all that stuff right there is interesting because as U.S. Their language is a branch of the Hmong Khmer, oh. so related to the Khmer people in Cambodia. Yep. And the Austro-Asiatic language family. Huh. Cool. There's your nice map. Yellow is Da Nang, and the western areas are where um, the different ethnic groups live. There. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Very organized. Um, yeah. All of their... Okay, I'm, I'm a big stickler about the trashy trash things, and I don't I don't like things to be dirty looking. And all of their little all trash right. cans outside for all the businesses were lined up perfectly. And um, and that's nice. Come in. I like it clean. Ooh, this place is huge. Shops. Yeah. Oh, should I say stuff about this? Hold on a minute. An eel? Crab. These are these are not all river fish. Maybe that one wasn't. I just thought a pike was. It just says shark, it doesn't say what kind. Huh. So I think this is gonna cover um, natural, cultural, and everything. Right, that's really cool. Did you, did you, you didn't go through all the facts listed yet, did you? <laughs> Come on, 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 come on,